Hello, good evening. How is everybody doing this evening? Hi, it's Tessa Marie, Financial Night. It's Thursday and we are doing our financial planning. The spending plan is on tonight. Hello, Dawn, how are you? I haven't spoken to you for a while. So everybody, hello, hello. Thanks for joining in. It's our financial planning night. I want to remind you of one thing. I am giving free financial planning coaching on IGG Live. And if you're interested, we'll coach you. Your numbers, you don't have to explain your numbers or sad story. I'll teach you one-on-one -on, -one on IG Live Monday, Tuesday, and, and Wednesday on how to do your financial plan. And, oh, hello, Susie. It's so late in Austria. Thanks for joining. Um, so on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I will do free coaching. If you live like Susie in Austria, or you live like Petra, Petra who is in Dubai, or you're like Don, who is in um, Knoxville, it's easy for you to tell me what time would be good for you, and I will do a one-on-one -on -one coaching. We will use your actual expenses, and I will tell you, teach you how to do it. Now, if you want to do personal, private um, coaching, I will do it with you. It will be private, but there is a fee for that. So the one-on-one -on -one coaching is really necessary. And if you have never done a spending plan, it will help you to do it. Hi, Angela. Thank you for joining. And I can do it with you Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I can do it earlier than seven, later than seven. And I will coach you. you I will teach you. You don't have to explain your numbers, but I will show you where things are going and how you're doing. And that will be just for you. Others can tune in and listen in. But it will be IG Live and that will be free. And I know how to do this and I can really teach you. I have tons of people that will swear to that. Um, this week I had a young man and they had a, 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 a second baby. And when he first came to me, he was 25. He had graduated from college with an age back. He worked for the um, gas company in Toronto. And his mother is a school teacher. We live on the same street. And she sent him to me because he was spending over $1,800 a month on snacks and whatever. So he came. He didn't come reluctantly. He came. I spoke to him and his girlfriend. I, at the time, we, I started taking just, he was saving only $50 a month in a 401k or an RRSP. And that's all the saving. And he was making $65,000 a year at the age of 25. So I talked to him and he was very adamant. I am not going to use my money. You cannot, I take my money. I said, I'm not taking it. I have nothing to do with your money. I am your GPS. Tell me what you want. So he said, well, we plan to get married. I want to have a house. I don't want to rent. I want to have my, my children. I want to pay for my wedding. So he had those goals. So we sat, sat down and I showed him all that surplus money. You're not paying rent, you're living for free at home, you're just wasting money buying junk food and whatever. And I didn't force him because I don't. And I showed him, I said, oh, why don't you give me 150 more and put it in this account? So I said, give me, but he's, I'm not actually touching the money. So he did, after a month, getting paid every two weeks and another month, and then he came in one day, he said, you know what? I'm really serious about this. I'm looking at how the changes. I have a vacation money. I have money to take care of my car. I have a car maintenance fund. I have an RSP. I have a house buying account. He said, let's, let's get rid of that $1,600. So we did that. And in 15 months, they had sufficient money for a down payment for their house between the two of them. She made less money. So they bought their first house. Um, I made sure when they got the approval from the bank, they brought it to me. Hi, I took care of it. I read it. When the man at the bank, he went to the same bank, not the same branch, but the same bank I worked with, uh, maybe 50 miles away, when he, he said to him, well, give me the approval. I need to take it to Tessa Marie. He said to him, Tessa Marie Schillingford. And she, he said, yes. He said, okay, let me take a second look at this before I give it to you. Because unknown to him, that guy worked in the same district as I, and he knew I was a stickler for being honest with the client. So he said he took it back in and he changed a few things. And I could see what he changed because I know what they would do. So he brought it to me. I told him it was good. And he bought this house. They moved in. They stayed two years. And then he, bought, he moved to a bigger house. They have a son that is turned two this year. And they just had a daughter who is a few days old. 
So he sent me a beautiful note. I should have read it to you, but it's on the same iPhone. And in the note he said, I said, congratulations on the second addition to your family. You have a king's, a king's family of son and a daughter. He said, great. He said, we couldn't have done this without you. Thank you for all, you, all what you have done. And we will never forget the generous way in which you taught us and how you got me to stand up to be a man. We are both very, very honored to have had you in our life. So it was a pleasure and that's what I do it for. So this young guy now is going to be 29 and he has already had this huge house. He's still making more money and he will have paid his house in 12 years because there's ways I can teach you to pay down your mortgage faster. There's little tricks the bank don't tell you because the longer that you take to pay for your house, the more money they make. That's the insider's job because I'm an insider. So anyway, tonight we are doing the spending plan. The spending plan is AKA budget. This is where do you want to put your money? Not where somebody's telling you to put it. Just like the young man, I showed him the benefits of sowing the money. When we are I'm coaching somebody, whatever I'm suggesting, I recommend it. And, I, and then I show the benefit. If you do this, when you are 30, you won't have a mortgage and you'll have the same kind or more income to do whatever you want. So there's always has to be what is in it for me. So what I'm going to teach you is financial freedom. I'm going, I'm going to be your financial coach. If you listen and you follow and you call me and you DM me, I will give you private um, public lessons and you will be able to see the difference. So I put a little on the stories tonight. I did show what a spending plan is beginning looks like. So if the spending plan is ready to help you decode how you should spend your money. So coaching and preparing it is not hard. It's just following up on the ideas you get. You don't have to change everything and turn it upside down one time. I will take you on the way. It's like going on a journey. I'll take you to point A, then to point B until you get where you want to go. I will never say no because I made a commitment to serve when I got my, my designation as a certified financial planner and a certified financial coach, I decided I would serve and I've done it a long time. So what you have to do is remember your income when you're holding the paper in your hand, always place your income on the left side, your page of your book. On the right side, you have a list of your expenses. At the top of the page is your name, the date, and the time. Six months from now, you will find out how important that, that is. Then your name, your date, and the time. This is where my journey started. This is how muddled I was. Six months later, this is how relaxed I am. I have a plan. So that plan, the most important thing once you have your income, if you look at the story that I posted earlier today, I showed an income as the money would be dis dis um, would have been placed in your account. You would see there's every penny that they give you. So I think I have $3,742.65. That's somebody's, bye Susie, good night in Austria. I know it's so late, thanks for dropping in. Um, so it would show you your income. Exactly your income is not the gross amount you get. It's not the $15 an hour that you're being paid. It's the amount they put in your account. This is the amount you have to spend, nothing else. That is the amount that you have to use. That's the account you live off. We get paid bi-weekly, weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly. Later on, I will teach you how to calculate a bi-weekly payment, a bi-weekly income to turn it into a monthly income so you can understand when you have monthly bills like heat and hydro and telephone and utilities, there's insurance, car payments, loans. All of these things are paid monthly. But when you get paid every two weeks, you don't get paid monthly. And you don't have 24 pay periods, you have 26. So that is something that's very important to remember. Write that down. If you are paid every week, you have 52 payments. If you are paid every two weeks, you have 26 payments. If you are paid on the 15th and the 30th, you have 24 payments. If you are paid once a month, you have 12 payments. 
So there is a difference. And the math for that is easy. I have a plan for that. So I will teach you how to go through that. All you have to do is to agree to do an IG and you will get it really. I'll give you the math. It's so simple, 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 simple math. So that income you're going to put, if you get paid every two weeks, put that amount four times on the left-hand side under income. You put the amount you get paid every week four times on the left-hand side. If you get paid every two weeks, you put that amount down twice. Although it's every, it's, it's every two weeks, it works out to 26 weeks, but you still put it down twice. If you get paid on the 15th and the 30th, you do that twice again. Monthly, you write it down only once. No, this is where you have to be careful. This is where you will need to drink water. This is where you will want to walk away. This is where when you see that expense list, you're going to want to tug at your hair. But hold on, I will take you over the raging waters. I have a way to do this. This is what I was trained to do. I wrote a book about it, Controlling the Debt Monster. I know how to manage money and I know how to teach better still. I know how to teach you. So at the end of the time you spend with me, you'll be a professional because you will know how to manage your money. That is what I'm good at. I will coach you from the beginning until you're standing firm. So begin expenses. When you look at the story today, you will notice I have savings at the top. And that, that is a reason. There is a reason for that. You need to make sure you always have money saved. I don't care even if it's $2 a week, $2 a pay. You must have something saved. Many, many financial planners and financial teams will tell you 10% of your income. I don't believe in that because I've seen that not everybody can do 10%. It's nice to stand on a pulpit and say, do 10%, you must do 10%. And then when you hear that, you know already, we all know we cannot do that. So you just give up the ghost. You don't do 10%. You do what suits you. You might be only able to do 3%. Your sister can do 15%. I can do 2%. Somebody else can only do 1%. But that is how it is supposed to be. You are unique, your circumstances are unique, your finances are unique like you. So, the best way to calculate it is this. I, I was so surprised, I was coaching with, um, I was having an interview with Char Char Sharon, and she said she learned that, and I was quite surprised. She said the first hour she worked in her salon, that amount is hers to save. That is great. If you're an electrician in Toronto, you make about $125 an hour. You cannot maybe save all of that. So what, you, what I teach you to do. So let's say, I will give you an easy number. So let's say you make $20 an hour. And I am telling you, every day you know you work, Angela, you need to take that $20 and you are saving $100 a week, 20 times 5. And I look at you and your eyes got get done cast and you tell somebody, I can't. That is too much. And I say, okay, hold on. Let's divide that by two. Can, and then we look at the numbers. Oh no, you cannot do 50. Can we bring it down to 25 a week? Well, that's a little, oh, okay. I, and then I say, okay, let's look at $13.50 because that is half of 25. You still cannot reach that. And somebody might say to you, a little saving is no savings. Don't trust them. Don't believe them. I am here to tell you that my first savings when I started and I was already married at 22 years old was $1.75 every week. This is all we could save. We had no more to save. I couldn't get, I wasn't going to get money from my parents. I wasn't going to get money from anybody. We had to do it, but all we had to save was $1.75, and boy, did we save that. I worked for the Ministry of Education at, the, at Bay and Wellesley, and I worked on the 18th floor, and every six months, they gave us a $3.25 raise. I cooked, I baked, I canned, I froze. I, I learned to do so many things so that I, we, we, would, we had money and we had things to eat. I would run down from the 18th floor with a thermos with two hot dogs and chicken soup, 
go to the office of where the credit union for the employees. And I would get there and this older lady had her pen and paper and 20 rims of pay pages to take my $3.50 to save it. That is what we did. And my husband got a 25 cents raise every hour, every, for an hour, whatever it was. We went down and I got them to take it too. And that is how we built our savings. So my original savings was really $3.50 every two weeks. But every time we got a raise, we added the raise to the savings. We added the raise to the savings. We, we stayed within our limit. I, I, I learned to buy um, one dozen corn and froze. I learned to freeze it. The government in Canada gave you free books on freezing and canning and baking. And I learned. And that's what I did. So I am, no matter where you are financially now, I have been there. I know exactly what it is to be there. We used to stretch our paycheck like a rubber band. We had to just hold it and gingerly pull it from one end to the other to make ends meet. But we did it. We did it by constantly working on it. So what I'm saying, that's why savings is at the top. If you don't have, it doesn't matter whether you already have your house, whether you bought a house. If you have $5 to save, get, get it to be saved. Your spending plan begins with savings. No, do not trust yourself to pay yourself. You will not pay yourself. You will never go to the bank and deposit $5. But if you go to the bank once and you ask them to take $5 on the 10th of every month or whenever you get paid and from this account into the savings account, you could ask them to do five cents. You could ask them to do one nickel. They will do it and they do it for free. Every bank does that for free. You know why? Your nickel, your dollar, your five dollars that they take and they put in a savings account for you, all of those five dollars all together will give them sufficient money when somebody qualifies for a mortgage. They want your money. So get the bank for, a, for one time to work for you. Don't listen to the naysayers that say the bank is only for themselves. You have to learn, and I am here to teach you and coach you how to manage yourself with a bank, how to get your value from a bank. Trust me, I know the tricks. So you go in and you get them to put that $5 there every two weeks, and you never have to turn back. When you get a raise, you call them or you phone them, whatever you do, you go in, and nowadays you do it online. And you increase it from five to six. Because let me tell you something. One percent in increase on your income is nothing. It's nothing when it's in your checking account. When you get your first check after you get your raise and the difference is one dollar and twenty one cents. If you leave it in your checking account, it's like pouring it through a sieve. A checking account is where things go in and they come out, they go in and they come out. It's a constant circle. We have a place in Toronto called Dundas Square. If you take a bag of feathers and you take it to Dundas Square and you leave the bag open and you walk away and you come back tomorrow, you will not be able to collect all the feathers. This is what a checking account is like. Everything just passes through it. So you harness that $1.21 and and you increase your savings and your philosophy in your mind has to be i didn't have it last week so i don't have it this week and this is what you have to say your savings is how you honor yourself for having worked all year so savings under that capital savings you can have your 401k you can have your rsp you can have your children's education account you can have your tax savings account. Now, don't tell me I cannot afford it because if you have $30, you can divide it between the four of them. You can, it's always doable. And I know how, can, how doable it can be. The minute you have a child that's born, just like the young man said to me, he said, oh, I said, I hope you have the children's saving, um, education savings plan. He said, oh yeah, I have, Thomas is there. And next, as soon as we get things going, Charlotte's is going to be done. He said, I know the value of education. So, and he, he had the money there, his parents had it saved. So what I'm trying to say to you, 
Under the savings umbrella, savings is the general word. Under the savings umbrella, there's different categories. You know how I learned it? I did a stint with the government sometime for literacy program. And I started studying the government of Canada. And I watched that how, they, how, how money was managed. In a way, and they have a good reputation for that. So much so, England grabbed one of our best financial ministers and took him to the Bank of Canada and took him to England. And he's still there. So at that time, I noticed, hello, I noticed that the government of Canada gives everything a name. Everything has a name. And I decided when I looked at it, if you have only one savings account, that is like an Irish stew. There's potato, there's carrot, there's meat, there's turnip. There's everything you can think of in there. When you take a spoonful, you don't know whether you're having carrot or tomato or bat or this. So they name things. And now the banks have a section where it's called nickname your account, rename your account at TD Bank. So you can open several savings accounts. They don't charge you for a savings account unless you take more than one withdrawal or two withdrawals a month. A savings account is for a purpose. And I will train you how to do that. So we leave the savings because they need a whole lecture on them. Then below that, rent or mortgage. You cannot change that amount. You have nothing to play with there. It's fixed. Your car loan, fixed. Your, your insurance for your car, fixed. No choice. Your gas and hydro and utility and your phone bill, most times they're fixed. You cannot change those because nowadays they charge you an average amount. So your heat for your house, your, your, um, your apartment, your, 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 if you don't have a car, you might have um, contents, insurance, those things are there. Then, of course, you have miscellaneous, you have the crazy madness of swiping with your card. One, I know cash is king, and I still believe it is. We cannot pay with cash, and we have to get on with it. But you have to know how much money you can swipe. Because this swiping thing, we don't care. We, we cannot see the money going. So our mind is not connecting with we're using too much money. When you use a credit card, you're like a drunken sailor. You don't know. You know, it's only some cases people tell me it's only when I'm declined I am aware that I have spent everything. And, you know, I feel sorry for them. Nobody told them. Somebody asked me last night, why don't they teach this in school? They can't because it's so individual. It's so specialized. Where it is to be learned is in families, but we hide it from our children. We don't tell them why we cannot buy the Nike Air shoe. My son wanted Nike Air and he got Converse. He came to me and complained about it. I took a black marker and I hid it for the Nike mark on, on top of it. He ran in the shoe. So, and I'm not, I, he told me you need it for basketball. I said, no, no shoe, what I use the D word, is going to make you jump any, any higher or do what you have to do. If you have your talent, like, like Evan said, your Michael John, Jack, Michael, you know, Jordan talent, it will come through. So you have to realize those things. That credit card is, a credit card is a murderer. A credit card and a line of credit can kill you. If you don't kill them first, they will kill you because they can hold you and they choke you. So many people I'm here listening now, I'm sure you know a credit card can help, can really choke you to death. You need to make sure you handle a credit card with respect. The money does not belong to you and you have to pay the people back. You must pay them back. And don't give me the, the line this young lady gave me at the bank. Well, I didn't ask them for the credit card, so I don't have to pay. I said, but they weren't the ones signing for those transactions. It was you. And one said to me, they knew I couldn't pay. But if you pay the minimum, they know you want more. If you pay the minimum, you are saying, I want more. That's what you are saying. And they, the bank is not your friend. The nice, sweet lady, the nice gentleman that is charming you and the lady that is flattering you, they're not your friend. They're employees of an institution that has to make a profit for its shareholders. This is who they are. When they get a bonus, they have, when they work, they get a bonus twice a year, June and January. 
When I managed the bank, they informed me my our fiscal year started November, October 1st. Is it October 1st, November 1st? And on the 15th of December, before we go on Christmas holidays, we were sent a circular to inform us of where how we are trending, how we are doing. So by October 31st of the following year, whether we're going to meet the targets that were set by the powers that be. So 15th of December, in six weeks into the year, they're telling you you're going to crash and burn 11 months later. If you don't change things around, then they, they make it even more tempting. They'll say to you, Tessamari, if you do this and you reach this target, your bonus will be this. Tessamari, if your team meets the target and the district meets the target and the Toronto meets the target, your bonus will be this. You think we're not going to sell coal to a, 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 a what you call it, people that dig for the coal? Or, or hay to a farmer, snow to a somebody who lives up, up north? That's our job. We need that bonus. That bonus goes into our retirement fund, untaxed. So we're going to move heaven and earth to give you another credit card, to give you a loan, to encourage you to buy a car. That's how we eat. That's our job. That's how we are fed. That's how we pay for our children's education. That's how we have to keep our home. That's how we pay our mortgages. The people at the bank are working for a living. They are not your friend. So when they give you a credit product, respect it. You have to pay it back. Stay within your limit. Know what your limit is and stay within it. And nobody's going to teach that to you but you. Money is very important. We have to do it because we need it to live. We need it to function. We need it to survive. We need it to make to, to put things in place. So when you walk into the bank, respect this thing. So on the left side, face when you have it and you're looking at it, left side is your income, the right side is your expenses. Now, at the end, when you have list all your expenses, all the miscellaneous things you buy, the bag of candies and you all what you buy your groceries and your shopping and you have a fixed amount eighty dollars for groceries every week so you spend eighty dollars rain or shine whether you need to spend eighty dollars or not the one place that we spend too much the one place where we waste too much is groceries many of you listening now if you open your freezer you have more chicken parts you could make a whole chicken if you could put them together you have gizzard, you have liver, you have legs, you have neck, you have stomach, you have, you have breasts, you have thighs, you have back, you have legs, you have wings. But you keep buying more anyway. And you just keep adding it on top of what you already got. Because it's on sale. I am here to tell you that because it's on sale does not mean you must buy it. Because it's on sale at Target today. Next week, Walmart will have it on sale because the manufacturer of most of these huge products, especially household good Procter and Gamble, they want to sell to everybody. So when the buyers from these big stores goes to see them, they look at them and they say, I want this. And then Walmart jumps up. I want it too. And Target does that. And the other one does that. And Loblaws does that. And Metro does that. They have to give it to them. If you look at the prices, the price at Target and Walmart, at Loblaws and Walmart, at Metro and Loblaws and No Frills and Freshco, the pennies apart. Why? They got the same deal, just a week apart. So if you don't buy, need it, don't buy it. There is no reason you need to have 20 bags of rice there. You cannot use them as a mattress or a pillow. You don't need 40 packets of pasta, all the same type. You don't need to have so much toilet paper that somebody else cannot buy another thing. It's like they're expecting a, a diarrhea infection. I don't know. So you wait. So if when you total your right side against your left side income, you take the total of the expenses, you put it in underneath the income and you subtract it and your income is not enough to carry you through, you are in a deficit. A deficit means you're spending more than you're making. You're spending more than you're earning. 
and know it's not your it's not a death sentence there is hope i know for sure where to go to find what you're missing i will take you there i will show you what you're doing i will give you one assignment tonight and if you do that you'll be surprised at the money you can save if you are bold enough if you mean to get solvent if you aim to have money if you want to have financial health i am giving you one thing to do take the time time yourself block the time off one hour get a book and a pen or pencil i don't care or your phone write it out pull out everything you have in your pantry and place it on the counter everything you have in the cupboard way back in the cupboard climb on a chair climb on a stool get into the cupboard and pull everything out list how many bottles of this how many packages of that list them and then you know put them back in order you know what i have always done i was taught that by the nuns the new things that i buy they go on the right i serve and i use from the left of the cupboard when i redesigned my kitchen i made my shelves 12 inches deep only just so i can see exactly what's in there that meant i needed more cupboard space we created it but none of my cupboards are deeper than 12 inches especially the standing cupboard the pull-out pantry is bigger but i can see what i have there and i keep track so that is where you will find you have many things that you have duplicate triplicate quadruplicate of and that list you shop from that list to prepare your meals for a while and the extra money you save at the end of the month you will notice because you're not spending that much on grocery you will catch the deficit that i know for sure is the one place you can manage your spending plan so a spending plan is knowing how much you bring in knowing how much you have pay you paying out for all the things on the right side of you and then where you are missing the mark where you where there is a gap with your spending and your income you look at the areas you can cut back you you might not be happy cutting off your internet or some of it or your cable or your wi-fi whatever whatever or your phone of course no you cannot change the car payment you cannot change the mortgage you cannot change the rent you cannot change the insurance you cannot change a lot of things these are fixed among and these are agreements you made so you have to honor the agreements you made with those providers so you cannot change that you cannot neglect them but you can manage your consumption of food you can manage your consumption of miscellaneous expenses you can manage your consumption of your wardrobe you can look at what you have in your wardrobe it if it's on sale it's not a license to buy you must remember they are earning money the only thing that matters to companies and it should matter to you is your bottom line this is why i always ask you to run your household like you're running a business when you have a, a pullback pullback when you have a way to save save because the time that you need a savings is something like COVID. The people that had more save are able to survive longer. This is true. The government is giving some expense and all of that, but it still gives you freedom to know you have prepared yourself for this emergency. This one, the whole world is working in. So your spending plan, that is the thing I want you to fix. That is the thing I will give you coaching on, personal coaching for free Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, three days, I am offering it to you anytime after 10 to 9. So you have, I can organize my day to do this. Unless I have a meeting at 2 with Evan or something like that. But if you call me and you want to book a coaching session on IG Live, it's just so I will take my time with you. You will write what you have to write down. I will give me a number and I'll say, okay, well, let's take it out of here. And oh, let's cut it back there look in the medicine cabinet look to see how many tubes of toothpaste you really really need when those at the back bring them to the front start to use what you already have at the back don't push them to the back just try to organize that because that that is where your money is 
if you really want to know where your money is, it's in your freezer and in your pantry and in your bathroom. We women, we have to have more lotion and potion. My friends laugh at me because I always have lotions and potions. And, and they, 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 they said her bag for her, her lotion and her potion is heavier than her bags for her clothes. So that's how bad it is. And I know that. As I said already, I've been there. I see shoes come in and like some women see chocolate and they see stars. When I see a lovely pair of heels, huh, I tell you, I see moon and stars and angels. and So I know all the witnesses, but I know how to combat them because I had to do them. And this is why I'm here tonight to tell you, join me for free coaching Monday. I will do private. I'll do you only you. You will be on there. I will be with you and we'll go over your expenses. You'll tell me what you want and I will show you how to get there. I will be your human GPS. Give me your information. I will come back with it and I will coach you and you will tell me when you fall, I will be there to pick you up and tell you it's okay. You can stumble. You are bruised knee. We have body sparring. We'll rub it and fix your knee and we'll go on. That's my job. That was what I was built for. I was built to serve you financially and I can do it. So give me the chance to do what I was sent on this earth to do, which is coach you and make you more financially healthy, financially independent, financially secure, that you can look back one day to the first page of that exercise book and say, wow, what a journey. And here I am, the results of the proof. So you'll remember the process. I had a morning blessing today, this week, about don't look at the process. Don't look at the result, look at the process. My job is to teach you the process. So you can always follow that map and to get where you want to go. So have a wonderful evening. I am so glad all of you. Hi, Rosie and, and Angela and Dawn. I, I can't see everybody else. Oh, come on. So thank you for joining me. And I hope I helped you somehow. I'm so grateful to have had you because you guys are giving me opportunity to do what I was sent on earth to do, which is to coach you financially. I know the way to do this. So give me the opportunity to help you be financially secure and to enjoy being financially free. So my job is to educate you, to enlighten you, and to encourage you to have a, a successful financial life. So sending you light and joy on this wonderful Thursday evening. And don't forget to join me tomorrow night. Ask me a question night. You can ask me some financial questions. Don't be afraid to do that. I will do it in such a way that you will not be embarrassed. Your numbers will never be told because we both will look at the numbers together. I will have a copy, you'll have a copy, and we will just talk about it. So I can say line two, you can maybe take $2 from line two and put it in line six. So this is how we'll do it. But don't be afraid to join me and ask a question. I'll send a, a story out tomorrow to remind you. Friday night, ask a question night. So check and see you guys tomorrow morning. Have an absolutely wonderful evening. Bye.